I've got a little monitor and everything. <gasps> oh, really? Isn't It shows me the video that's being streamed. That's pretty slick. You like it, huh? I've got a little monitor and oh, everything. Hang on a second. Why is it? <gasps> oh, really? Isn't it shows me the video like that's it, being huh? streamed? That's pretty slick. You like hang it, on. huh? I've got a little monitor hang and everything. Hang on a second. Why is it? <gasps> oh, really? Isn't it shows me the video like that's it, being huh? streamed? Oh my okay. That's pretty like slick. Like hang it, okay, stop. I've got a little monitor hang and everything. Hang on a second. Why is it? <gasps> oh, really? Isn't it shows me the video that's being streamed? Okay, that's pretty slick. Hang on a I've got a little monitor and everything. Hang on a second. Why? Okay. Oh my gosh. Are you there? Oh wait. You can't be there. How do I Okay, hang on. How do I turn this the audio off? It says mute. Uh No, I don't want this on anymore. That is not good. <laughs> is it, I don't know if it's still playing or I had to mute uh Google real quick so I don't I don't think I can hear you. Um let me unmute this. Still playing or it's still going. I had to mute uh think I can hear you. Um Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can I'm hear you, but this. it's still playing it's, or it's still going. Why I had to mute the it uh, It's still going. Think I can hear you. Um Can oh, you hear me now? I can hear you. Yeah, I can I'm hear you, but oh, it's still playing or it's still going. Why I had to mute the uh, oh It's still going. I think I can hear you. Um <laughs> Can oh, you hear me now? I can I hear you. Yeah, I can oh, hear you. But it's still playing. Or it's still going. Why I had to mute. It Doug. Oh it's still going. I think I can hear you. Um, <laughs> can oh, you hear me now? I can I hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. But it's still playing. Or it's still going. I had to mute. Doug. It's still going. I think I can hear you. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. But it's still playing. Or it's still going. I had to mute. Doug. It's still going. I think I can hear you. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. But it's still playing. Or it's still going. I had to mute Doug. Okay, hold on a second. <laughs> this is not. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to stop this. Um, hmm. All right, let me let me do something real quick. <laughs> that was not good. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, it was way wrong here hold on a second let me uh i have to make some kind of adjustment i was not expecting that for sure uh where can i set this up to mute it um ox no i need that it it's causing feedback and i can't pe play anything right now because it's it, the video is not even running <sighs> well that was a glitch I have the I have it on pause. Uh, let me let me just get out of there. Nope. Let me get. Hang on. Uh, I need to get out of this uh, screen here. All right. I think I turned it off. Let me see if I can unmute screen here. Okay. Are nope, you there? Still I'm on. here. Are you there? All right. I think I turned it off. What is Let me playing? see if I can unmute screen here okay are no, you it's there? Still i'm on. here are you there all right i think i turned it off what is let me playing? see if i can unmute screen here okay are no, you it's there? Still i'm here are you there all right i think i turned it off what is let me playing? see if i can unmute <laughs> screen here okay are you no, there? Still i'm here are you there all right i think i turned it off what is let me playing? see if i can unmute <laughs> Screen here. Okay. Are you there? Still I'm here. Are you there? All right. I think I turned it off. What is Let me see if I can unmute. Screen here. Okay. Are you there? Still I'm here. Are you there? All right. I think I turned it off. What is Let me see if I can unmute. Okay. Hold on. That's still feeding back, though. It looks like. How is it feeding back through the mixer into the uh, stream? Uh, I don't know. Let me see if I can. I'll just go back to. Yeah, it takes the same source. I'd have to listen to the stream to see if it's still going. But I have it. I have Google muted right now, which is where it's playing through. 
boy. Uh, I don't know what to do. Hold on. Which is where it's playing through. <sighs> boy. I don't uh, have it, I don't have it I don't playing anywhere. Hold on. Which is where it's playing <laughs> through. <sighs> boy. I don't, uh, have it, I don't have it I don't playing anywhere. Hold on. Which is where it's playing. All right, this is messed up. I have, I have the browser closed. Let me see if it's on any place else. Maybe that's something's up with that. Maybe it's on a different. I have the browser closed. Something's up with that. Maybe it's. I have the browser closed. How is it playing? Oh, wait a second. Oh, I just found it. Hang on. Hang on. I'm almost here. Okay. <laughs> you there? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> oh, boy, this can you is hear fun. me? I can hear you fine. Okay. I had... Okay. I had... I have four four Chromes open. One of them had Mixcloud. It was Mixcloud that was echoing back through. Oh, really? Oh, gosh, wow, how annoying! So now I should be able to go back to. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I can't wow, get rid of it. Wow, that was annoying. I was looking at the. Make sure this isn't playing. I had it. I had the streaming part muted. I had it paused. The video was not playing, but I was still hearing it. I go, "This is driving me nuts." Oh, have we? Are we on yet? Oh, hold yes. on a second. I have to stop this. We're on. Okay, here we go. I gave I gave the the intro, oh. and we are on live. Oh, oh I already did the intro. Oh. Zip. You did the audio. I did the audio. Yeah. Oh. Oh, crud. The, the, right. the intro's been played. Everybody's anyway. out there listening to us and listening to the <laughs> mess up and enjoying it like they always do because it happens on the show a lot. <laughs> we're, we're, I had, so we're, I don't even know. I have to check. Oh, I got to go back to, so I have to, uh, I have to go to Twitter and see if that worked, but we're uh, just uh, like an hour and a half, two hours ago. Um, there we go. So that's live. Uh, went on, um, could not get on the old streaming service that we used uh, to uh, last week. Some somehow they changed uh, names or businesses or something. So I had to find an alternative, which I did. And we're going out to four streams right now. As far as I know, I still need to get on Twitter and find out. But in my other browser window, I was monitoring uh, Mixcloud to see what it was going to do. But I minimized it. And this new service shows me a video screen. It shows me the chats and everything. I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. That's how the show started. And what I didn't know <laughs> is Mixcloud was playing at the same exact time. So that threw me off. And I'm sitting here pausing the video on the streaming part, thinking it's paused. It's the video's not moving. It's muted. Why am I still hearing this thing echo? And I would, and I had to mute. Um. What you call? It? I had to mute. Um, yeah, yeah, it's still on. It's just ridiculous. But anyway, I figured out Mixcloud automatically started playing, and that's a. I uh -huh. when I found the window, uh, now I think we're good. But uh, now I can't find the chat. I lost my page because I was closing everything down. I was like, okay, something's not right here. <laughs> Shutting um, everything off. <laughs> I was. I was like, it's, you know. You what was it? Uh, not long ago, you had to reboot or something, and it's like I had to get completely out of it. So right. I'm like, so I'm starting to shut down stuff, and internally I'm shutting down as well. <laughs> so <laughs> internally, <laughs> internally I'm like, okay, this is not happening, and um, well now, so and now I can't find the. No, chat that's what it was echoing. I'm 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 sure the listeners, if they mm -hmm. listen from the beginning, they heard all those echoes and everything. Yeah, and, you know, repeating of what we said and. And, and I, I didn't know if you were there or not. Mike says, "Are you there, Ron?" And I said, "Yeah, I'm here." But yes. then we hear that like six times. Yes. <laughs> well, and I thought, I thought when you were saying, "I'm here," and I'd go, "Okay, well, I'm trying to fix this," and I'm like, "Wait a minute, is that the recorded I'm here, or is that him saying it live?" I'm here. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and now I I I, uh, I I don't know how to get back. I can see the video playing. I don't know how where the chat went to. So <laughs> we're just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was ready to close up shop. I was like, yeah, this ain't happening today. Um, yeah, I'll, this is going crazy. I'll find, uh, 
yeah I, I was laughing and, and then if i muted it if i muted that channel on the mixer then i couldn't hear you so i was like okay i'll I'll, I'll shut down chrome well chrome shut down everything you know because uh, i'm using voice on chrome and yeah it was just a mistake mm-hmm. i gotta find where the chat was. so we're live Oh man, I didn't get to do the intro. I did. A, so we are live. Yes, let me. Uh, I did the intro. Good. Yeah. All right. Let me. Uh, yeah. Let me see what uh, studio. Nope. I, I don't know, but oh, there it is. There's chat. Okay, I got back to it. Oh, wait, I got to make sure it's paused. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, if you're out there and you're yeah. you're listening to this. I was just laughing because it was so funny. I thought you were talking to me live. It was funny, yeah, but it was, it was the it was the. If I disappear, I'm having mm-hmm. a lot of thunder and lightning around me right now. So yeah. if I disappear, it's because of that. Yeah, um, yeah it was funny because it just it, and we hear one and then throw another one on top of it and then and it was just like you know row 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 your boat with uh, mm-hmm. uh, twenty people. I mean, yes. it was. Oh, one time it, it would, <laughs> I unmuted it. It would not stop. It was like, uh, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Are you there? Are you there? I'm here. Oh, oh no. Whoa. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so. it was It was crazy. It, <laughs> Sorry, folks. I apologize for that. <laughs> it was, uh, it was a new service. And then all of a sudden, yeah. oh, my gosh, what's going on? I don't even know if this yeah. chat thing is working. But uh, if anybody's out there on Facebook or something listening to this madness, if you just say like a... I can hear you or something. I'll see if it pops up on this chat. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm surprised. I usually get it. When we hook up for Facebook, too, mm-hmm. when mine does it, we usually get mm-hmm. a ding on my yes. uh, my phone because I have my phone in here. Yep. And I used to get a ding. Well, there's no ding because we're going through a different service. And so oh, I can do a test here. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't know if it's on there or not. Testing. Sorry, folks. We have to do this live because there's no other way we can do it. We don't know if it's it's working without doing it. I did get it. Okay, it's working. Um, um, did you? Yeah. Okay, good. It says Facebook. Uh, yeah, sent a message. Okay, cool. All right. So. All right. Good. Because I, I didn't get a ding because the ding usually comes in. So. Yeah, it's online. Uh, cool. Uh, through yeah, that other service. I don't know why it didn't work uh, to let you know we're on. Um, yeah, that's, that's odd. Wine. Yeah. Hmm. Uh-huh. So we are live on, oh, we're live on Twitter, too. So if you're on Twitter, you oh. can uh, follow us on uh, twitter.com forward slash allaboutwinebtr. Um, we're live on Mixcloud. Oh, my gosh. We're on Mixcloud, uh, mixcloud.com forward slash allaboutwine. Uh, Facebook, you know the page there. YouTube, uh, I have no idea and uh, blog talk radio so <laughs> and mm-hmm. i i guess apple podcast yes uh ron you know, I mean, found out it, before uh, going on live we were looking at it and, and ron found a uh, this resource on our main uh, stream from blog talk radio where it shows where are the podcasts are coming from or you know listeners and stuff and uh it it's a lot bigger than i originally thought um I don't know. Yeah, I, um, it surprised me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, very impressive. Uh, there's, there's, yeah, Apple and uh, I forgot the other one, P- Pod Addicts or something. Um, some of the shows have gotten outrageous numbers, so it's fantastic. Um, and I still don't know how that now is that playing. Are those statistics playing into our Blog Talk Radio stats? Because it just topped over two hundred ninety thousand. I don't know. Is it is it calculating? the other as well is it calculating pod addicts and and apple ron ron he disappeared (laughs) ron i don't hear you (laughs) oh no (laughs) uh ron i do not hear you in case you can uh if you can hear me you have let me see if i can refresh this yep, it shows there's an issue with it ron you there hello i don't hear him 
I do not hear you, Ron. Ron, if you can hear me, go to chat real quick on Blog Talk Radio and just say, yeah, I'm still here or something. <clears throat> My voice is crackling. Otherwise, I don't hear you. Hello, Ron. Nope, I don't think he's in there. Ron, are you there? I have a lot of background noise on this stupid thing. Audio capture, when I'm not talking, it's still, the meters go up. Ron, are you there? I'm just, uh, it's all the way down. Um, I don't hear anything from you, Ron. So... And I wonder if there's no I just heard blog talk radio because the sound effect that you're hearing here where's it at we'll do this that's coming from blog talk radio so I know I can hear blog talk radio I am not hearing Ron's line <clears throat> or or maybe you can call in on your cell phone we'll leave the other uh, direct line open if you're still there it sounds like he's still uh, He's still online, but I uh, can't tell if he's uh, if he can hear me or not. I do not hear anything. Nope. I heard that. That was mine. Ron had just said he might be. You might be off because of thunderstorms in the area. Uh, he's still logged in, but I have no audio for him. Ron, if you're there, if you can hear me, go into uh, the chat box on Blog Talk Radio and say something there. This moment of silence is for sale, by the way. If you'd like to sponsor that little bit of silence, uh, let us know at uh, allaboutwine101 at gmail.com. Uh, we would, uh, we'll give you a good deal and uh, <laughs> advertise for you. I don't know. I don't think he can hear me because uh, there's nothing on chat right now. Uh, let's take to the emails. See if he's on email. Nope. YouTube, your show is live now. Probably have zero listeners because of the technical difficulties. So, Ron, if you're listening or if you're out there, I cannot hear you. This is Mission Control. There's a carbon monoc or carbon dioxide short shortage. Are you kidding me? Hang on a second. I just pulled this up. I, I don't know if he's still out there. I'll keep monitoring that uh, browser though. Don't play it. God, these things automatically start up. Craft breweries are facing tough decisions amid a nationwide carbon dioxide shortage. I didn't realize there was a shortage yet. I thought it was. Uh, read along with me, folks. We're still on page one. Uh, and one brewer has other guys. I'm on the third paragraph. Follow along. Uh, one brewer plays with you. Night Shift Brewing in Everett, Massachusetts, just outside Boston. Uh, cited the CO2 shortage as the reason is suspending operations. Uh, oh. Ron, are you there? <laughs> Still trying to reach Ron. Oh, this is like a video. What is this from? NBC. I can't I can't rebroadcast that, can I? 
I don't know if I can or not. I, we need to look into that because that could be material. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Slow moving crisis. Uh, even before that, are you still reading along with me? Uh, carpet dogs, our suppliers are already tight because pandemic shutdowns forced many key suppliers. I didn't realize it was a carbon dioxide supplier. That's interesting. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, there's been I'm on the final paragraph, folks. Uh, but the sun in the Mississippi version. Okay, good. Next story. <laughs> what happens when Ron is not able to get on? Ron, if you can hear me, call on the uh, listener line with your cell phone, but leave that one logged in so we can at least go online. You are logged in. It just doesn't show. Yeah, still logged in. Uh, let's see. Uh, organic conference in Brisbane, Australia. Hang on a second. I did I just say it like a real Australian? Brisbane? Is it Brisbane or Brisbane? Ah, see, people just cringed. <clears throat> Uh, 2025 targets, which were, oh, I, I'm on a different story right now. Uh, the Australian Organic Conference last week uh, reaffirmed, uh, businesses reaffirmed their commitments to the 2025 national packaging targets while recognizing the need to shift consumer behavior. It's consumer behavior. Do I have a slap on here? That would be funny. Hang on a minute. I should add a slap to this. That'll straighten them up. Uh, let's see. I think the conference is when they're going to church and consumer behavior. Uh, we all the consumers are much more conscious about making this. I'm on the fifth paragraph of this article, if you were reading along with me. Uh, compared to standard 500 gram bottles, cask wine packaging reduces life cycle impacts by 48%. Huh. Yeah, there's not enough in there. Uh, okay. Still waiting for uh, Ron to get, uh, get on with us. Uh, hopefully. It could be just an audio issue. But I do not hear anything from him, but I do hear, um, I do hear blog talk radio. This is coming from blog talk radio's audio. So I do, I am hearing that. So I know I can, I can hear something from, that's a little test sometimes. So we know where the disconnect is. Anybody else on Facebook want to chime in here? Please do. <laughs> <laughs> uh Tog Sisters? What? Oh Tognetti. Tognetti. Could be Tog. Yeah, Tog. T O G. Uh let's see. Uh how does he do this? Every week comes up with an hour's worth of material. Uh, just the dedication is uh amazing. How he keeps this this uh, going, and I can't find anything. <clears throat> Let's see if he's uh, emailed me. I don't see anything on email. May have to shut the show down. Let me take a look at the weather radar. I know y'all are interested in what the weather's like. Uh, oh, uh, here is a here's what I'm seeing on the weather radar. If y'all want to take a look at that, that's what it looks like. You can't see this. I don't have the webcam or anything on. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, there's definitely some major thunderstorms uh, over where he's at. Um, yeah, he's probably, uh, that's, that looks pretty bad over there. Pretty heavy. It's odd that it shows him still online, though. That's that's what I don't understand. <clears throat> All right, let me see if I can find out some more information here. I know you want to. You tuned in for some reason. It wasn't to hear me, that's for sure. Uh, news out of France. I cannot pronounce about forty percent of the words in it, so I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, <laughs> Ned Nomad. What? Nomad hotel space. Interesting. Okay. Good. You uh, saying things under better times of Oh, that's good. Let's try that. Because uh, I am. I am in the elderly population, aren't I? Aren't I? What, what effect? Ooh, oh. Uh, the people of Japan. 
You know, they're, they're like 100 years old and they look like they're 20. I don't get it. Um, they have some of the highest life expectancies in the world at an average of 85 years. Uh, but as they live longer, what dietary fitness or socioeconomic factors affect health as they age? Well, uh, exploring cognitive function, researchers at Osaka University and the Tokyo Metropolitan Institute of Gerontology. Let me write that one down because I'll never pronounce that one again. Uh, recently collected health and lifestyle data from Japanese seniors over the age of 75 and found that moderate and consistent wine consumption was associated with higher cognitive function. <sighs> wow, that's a good tip. Uh, so drink wine, folks. Uh, the study published in BMC Geriatrics followed 1,226 men and women in Japan ages 75 to 87 during 2016 and 2017. The subjects were recruited from the Sonic Cohort. Uh, what? Octogenarians, non-octogenarians, and uh, blah, blah, blah. Some other thing I can't pronounce. Uh, an ongoing study that began in 2010 and has followed up on participants every three years. Uh, let's see. Researchers noted the frequency of drinking and types of alcoholic beverages, including beer, wine, whiskey, Japanese rice spirits, and sake. Alcohol consumption frequently was broken down into four categories, none less than one day per week, one to six days per week, and daily, which, of course, is the preference. Where's my uh, rim shot? Oh, there it is. Thank you. Uh, for men, al- <laughs> I gotta get that ready. Uh, for men, alcohol consumption was categorized as none, which was zero grams of alcohol, moderate, one to 39 grams, moderate to excess, <laughs> excessive, 40 to 59 grams, and excessive at 60 grams and over, while women's thresholds were half of that. Um, let's see. <laughs> I'm on the seventh paragraph of the story if you're following along. Uh, They also add that the study comprised older people comprised older people who voluntarily participated and tended to be healthier than the average older member of the population. Lastly, alcohol consumption data was evaluated by interviews, which can be subject to inaccuracy. Um, They said uh, they would like uh, to us next to assess the impacts of red wine versus white wine. So drink wine and your cognitive function, cognitive function will be uh, checking Ron again. Oh, uh, that might be Ron there. Hold on a second. Ron. It, it is Ron. Oh, I was, on, I was on a different browser. You're on your phone. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I died. Uh, the, the whole system went down. I wow. uh, Lost picked power. it out and everything is... <sighs> is down so you're still that's why i'm surprised that i got through i didn't know that uh this yeah. thing would stay on well you're still you're I still logged in as the host you're still logged in that's what's interesting is is your uh your direct connect or login is still on there that's how we're still on the air because if if that gets kicked gets kicked then the show is off um so that's still on and that's how we're on now i, I just kept it going so um I didn't know well, if you could hear me or not, but uh, then I switched my tab I back. I can hear you. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, so we are. But I, I don't. Uh, hmm. Are you are you by candle it, power or are you have electricity? Uh, more candle power right now. Oh and, wow. Uh, uh, which which means that the articles that I was going to share with the readers tonight, and stuff like that, <laughs> is on the computer. Yeah. And I have no access to them. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was like, yeah, so, if you don't have electricity, then that's, yeah, that's a no-go. Um, and here we are. That's right. So whatever something. you were talking about, you are doing a good job. Keep no. talking about it. No, <laughs> no. Uh, I can't find news like, like you do. I mean, uh, he, he does it, I don't know, everybody out there, he does that every week for the show uh, when we, well, probably when we do have guests as well, because sometimes, you know, we have to, uh, at last minute, it's like, oh, can't make it or something. But uh, Ron comes up with uh, with everything for the show for at least an hour, hour plus, and uh, can keep it going. And I'm over here struggling. I, I'm on the, what is this, Wine Spectator. There's plenty of articles, but I'm looking through them and I'm going, why? I don't know. I, I just, I don't know which one. And then the one from France, I couldn't even pronounce the beginning of it. So I said, forget that. Um 
but <laughs> I know I know what you go through. It's like Francis AXA. Okay, never mind. Next, um, I cannot. Uh, here's another one from from Bordeaux. Okay, where's where is Wine Spectator? Are they in the U.S. or is this a? Yes. Wow, really? Yeah. I, I think they're published in in <clears throat> New York City. If uh, wow. If I know, if I can read this, like I say, it's dark here, and so the sun is Ron, Ron sun is setting, like, so I I can't. Yeah, I looked at the weather radar. Everything. I looked at the weather radar, and you are really under the oranges and a couple of reds and all kinds of bad news there. So yeah, yeah. oh, well, really lightning! Bad. I mean, the lightning mm-hmm. snapped and crackled, and mm. then actually the the power went off when it wasn't lightning. I mean, it was just. Someone down the street stopped. You know, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I was right in the middle of. Actually, I was in the middle of saying, "If I disappear," mm-hmm. and then boop, that I was remember it. that. And yeah, you had said that. Yeah, so. you, you told everybody there's uh, storms or something around you, and uh, in case you uh, lose audio, and that was it. <laughs> that was it. I lost audio right then. <laughs> yeah. You so you uh, did for sure. Um, and mm. it's. It's out and everything. Hopefully, is is rebooting, but I yeah. don't have anything here yeah. to be able. I, I've got Wine Spectator magazine also. You know, I'm trying to find mm-hmm. out where it's published. Where's the publishing page? I can't find a publishing page on it. Oh, there it is. Okay, wow, there's a twelve pages in. Uh, it is published at New York headquarters, West Coast bureaus communications I'm, I'm curious now since you mentioned that uh this is in teal box well subscriptions go to boone iowa but there's a lot of stuff i think boone iowa is consisted of nothing but uh subscription uh for everybody okay. but i don't know where is this published is uh, editors and everybody design, video, technology, advertising, entry market, New York headquarters. I guess New York. Here's it's the new New York headquarters, hmm. and uh, hmm, I don't know, but yeah, it's out, I, I believe it's out in New York uh, to answer your question, which was. Hmm. I spent much longer than I should have to answer a simple question like that. Yeah. So. Hmm. Uh, Kate, Cassia Shifter, uh, who was on oh, yeah. with us uh, a year ago, mm-hmm. uh, was speaking to us out of New York. So I, I think it's it's uh, New York where they're located and where it's published and all I that just, good stuff. Yeah, I just saw the um, focus of some of the articles were from about you know France and French wine and this and Bordeaux, and I'm like, okay, can I find something, you know, little more local so <clears throat> oh, my voice is gone yeah it's not, uh, um, new york wine experience i don't know if mike mentioned that to you mm. but that's coming no. up on october 20th to 22nd Ooh. it's gonna be at the marriott marquee in new york city wow uh that th- those things are great uh they are uh seminar programs and they have people who are wine presidents and uh, wine, grape growers and all that, uh, Oregon, Pinot Noir people and all that. I'm not going to read you all their names and everything because it's you could care mm. on that. But uh, they have a signature tasting of the top 10 wines of 2021. Uh, and uh, let's see, yeah, uh, worldwide. So, wow, that's that's quite a, quite a tasting there. So that's coming up on October 20th to 22nd. Um, uh, I'm sure you can click online, which I can't, and find out the costs and all that <laughs> stuff. Nope. But uh, uh, that's that's coming up. But um, what was I, I was going to? Oh, I know one of the subjects I was going to talk about tonight, which I I can't because I don't have access to my information. But I was going to talk about how this heat, which I'm sure everyone across the country is experiencing, because it seems like everyone across the country is experiencing experiencing it but how this heat is affecting the grapevines and uh the drought and stuff like that now the grapevines have an uncanny ability to actually 
look for water. Their their vines go down and they dig down and they can survive when other plants can't because grapevines can dig down pretty deep and find the uh, the water they need. That's why, well, we talked about this uh, in, uh, two or three years ago. That's why fracking uh, in a grape growing area is so critical because the chemicals in the ground, the grapevines don't care what the chemicals are. They will just dig down and find the water and uh, start using it and feeding it into the, their, their grapes. And it could create a problem. I don't know. Uh, we never came to a conclusion on that show and since then. And they've stopped a lot of fracking since then, so it's become a moot issue anyway. But grapevines can survive droughts, and but the hot weather is hard on any plant as well as any people. And so the the heat in areas when you start getting consistent temperatures of over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, then it really starts affecting the, the growing and all that. This is also affecting grapevines in uh, Italy. Uh, the Chianti, Chianti Classico region is experiencing some major drought right now. And that is coupled with some high temperatures. And it's affecting not just the grapevine, but the olive trees, the, the uh, olive oil and olives and all that stuff. And they have a netting system that they are putting over the grapevines and over the olive trees in that area and doing a drip system, uh, a slow watering drip system. And this seems to help, but not cause them to flourish. Uh, but it's keeping them alive and, and well. The amount of grapes that's going to be produced this year in the Chianti Classical area is going to be down uh, uh, quite a bit, actually, because the drought is not being able to give, uh, the, the grapevines are not being able to get the water to feed into the grapes. And so, therefore, uh, the actual yield is going to be down to help the grapes that are still on the vines and stuff, they are cutting back, they're pruning uh, so that the grapevines will feed the grapes that are there and try to get them to be juicier, if you will. But without the water and with the heat, it's creating problems. And the same thing's going with the olive, uh, the olive trees and the olives. Uh, they are smaller and not as juicy so therefore olive oil from that region is also suffering so but there was some more information i was going to tell you about that but that's some stuff i remember uh from the article so the the, the heat and drought and it, the heat is causing drought in a lot of areas too california i Technically, I think California might be in their sixth year of drought, something like that. Uh, their water levels are way down, way, way down. And because of that, they are not able to, uh, uh, the, the grapevines aren't able to flourish like they hope. I don't think, let's see, this is, August, yeah, they, we should have grapes out now. Uh, uh, Verizon has passed. We should have grapes out on the vines now. They they should be growing because uh, August uh, is starting to be harvest season toward the end of August and into September and October. So this is going to really affect some of the grape regions. Uh, well, not just in California, but uh, uh, around the country. Of this heat. I mean, Texas is hitting temperatures of 110 for days in a row. I, it's uh, frightening how much heat that is and how much that is doing to the grapevines and to the grapes themselves. So we may see a smaller yield throughout the country uh, on the uh, 
on grapevines because of the heat and and the drought. So, yeah, that's just uh, something I remember and something I was going to talk to you about tonight. But uh, obviously, I was going to give you more information. But this is all about wine, a rare episode because we had that glitch at the beginning, and then we had lightning <laughs> knock out my internet and. The yeah. TV and the lights and everything. Mm. And so we are setting, not quite by candlelight yet, but it will be by the end of the show. And because of that, I'm not able to give you the information I was hoping to pass on to you tonight. Yeah. So, but thanks for listening. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's uh, always an experience. Yeah, let's see. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I don't. Uh, let's see if I can. Uh, let's see. I have a another book here that I'm looking at that's recent. Okay, here. Okay, this is. Uh, County, okay, County Classical. This is talking about it. And it, it was talking about the weather there. It's just a little small article. Um, it uh, said in the County region, uh, in addition to reduction in grapes, wine growers also have had to deal with extreme weather events that did not quench the thirst of the soil, but damaged the crops. Extreme weather phenomena are getting stronger and stronger, said uh, Palio Cianfaroni. And Palio Cianfaroni is uh, the owner of Cap, uh, Cap Arsa Wine Estate. And he said that a couple of weeks ago, a hailstorm destroyed 40% of the grapes there. He said, luckily, the quality of the grapes have not been affected so we'll see what happens. So they still get in quality grapes, but it destroyed 40% of the grapes there. So much, much smaller yield out of the county classical region coming up this year. So um, it's uh, not just in the United States. This this heat and extreme weather is, is starting to affect the, the world, and it's, it's affecting the great growing regions and everything around the world. So it's uh, a, uh, a serious thing. Uh, the heat, we're saying, oh, geez, the heat's bothering me. I'll step inside and cool off the air conditioner. Well, the grapevines can't do that. And it is starting to affect them. So uh, let's see if I can find any other little articles I can pass on to you here on this Trade magazine. Uh, oh, here's something. We talked about scams before, wine scams. Uh, there is a six individ uh, uh, six six individuals were involved with a Cantalon producer uh, of Grupo Reserva de la Tierra. Uh, they're accused of making over fourteen million dollars a year euro, fourteen euro million dollars euro, from distributing falsely labeled bottles from twenty nineteen to twenty twenty one. Wow, you know, and you know, how can you tell? Uh, you can't. We've talked about this before on the show about wine fraud and stuff like that, and it's. Uh, you know, unless they're caught, then there's not much. And people spend a lot of money on these things, which they'll never see. Uh, so this article says the group passed off perhaps 40 million bottles of cheap table wine in total as fine wines from uh, uh, from good wine growing regions. Uh, you know, the uh, uh, Reserva. Uh, regions and all that, and so uh, they uh, were caught because certain irregularities and were noticed when 
looking at the production figures, and that's how they got caught. Uh, let's see. The, according to the Catalan newspaper Ara, Reserva de la Terra is accused of selling 22.4 million bottles labeled as being from Terra Alta. And that's a figure 13 times greater than permitted. And the one which outnumbers the total reported output of wineries in the area by 5 million bottles. <laughs> well, no wonder they're caught. Jeez, people, if you're going to do that, you know, think about what you're doing. Um, the figures were reportedly nine times higher than what was permitted to be sold. Uh, the police have un also uncovered approximately 81,000 fake DO labels, which is uh, their uh, designation for uh, good wine. Uh, and the depth of the allegations, they say, and the deception doesn't stop there. It claims that a three-tier system was developed in terms of the false wine. Stock wines for supermarket shelves were the most basic, followed by higher quality wines to convince professional buyers. And then there were wines of an even higher quality in order to fool pallets at competitions. So they had this thing you know, all set up. You know, they're, they're saying, okay, this is this, and we're going to enter this in a competition, and people, ooh, this is great. Then they go out and they buy themselves a bunch of the wine, which is cheap table wine. So it was quite an operation there, but they were caught. Uh, the six are due to appear in court in the city of Rius, Rius I, uh, I guess the name of Rius, on September 21st and 22nd. And uh, they uh, said, uh, this is upsetting. What was that? Is that me? No, I think that was... I don't know how that does that because I, I don't have system sounds on. And back to the program. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, uh, that, this is one of those episodes. I, yes. You know, I, yeah. um, they said that the uh, uh, it's the big guns of France and Italy that wine buyers need to be vigilant at all times and double check labeling and double check, you know, test random wines and stuff like that, because this could happen. Uh, this is one that was caught, but there is possibilities of others going on out there. Uh, so uh, this is <laughs> 40, 40 million bottles of cheap table wine being passed off as expensive wine. That just, uh, that's, that's staggering. I, it really is. Uh, the numbers don't match up for them and all that and everything. That's how they got caught. They were just greedy. That's all. If you're going to you're going to do scams, don't be greedy. That's that's what gets you caught. Uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, sorry, I got to look for other articles here because. Uh, my power is down. That's why I'm on the landline, and uh, it's not affected by power. Oh, not landline on my cell phone, which isn't affected by power right here. And so I can do it, but I'm checking my magazine here to see if I can find anything that you might be might be interested in. Uh, there you go. We've talked about hybrid grapes. Here's a little something we can talk about for a minute. About hybrid grapes. Uh, the, there are a lot of grapes. Well, all grapes are basically breeding of one type, some sort of a hybrid, if you will. But this is uh, the, the hybrid grapes that are being used now in a lot of areas are because of the climate change. They're trying to make grapes available for wine because they will grow in colder winters and hotter summers. Uh, but uh, Seneca Lake, New York, which is one of the uh, 
uh, finger links areas. Uh, say grapes that reflect their region's agricultural heritage are easier to grow. And they sell like hotcakes and are well suited to a changing climate. Uh, it says that the, uh, well, let me just. Well, I'll read you this article. It's, it's not very long, but it's, it's better than me trying to uh, trying to tell you about it. It says, like the, their counterparts in Italy, Spain, and Greece, and many other wine-producing areas, wine growers and vintners on Seneca Lake have begun to shrug off the commercial appeal of the so-called noble grape varieties. Now, these are the grapes that you're so used to. I mean, editorialized while I'm going through this. Noble grapes are the Cabernet Sauvignon, the Merlot, the Cabernet Franc, the uh, Zinfandel. Well, I don't think Zinfandel is included in noble grapes, but there's there's a list of uh, I think six red and six white that they classify as the noble grapes: uh, Chardonnay and uh, well, I need to get myself caught up on the noble grapes here. I used to be able to rattle them off, but I can't. I can't right now. But these are the ones that have been around for a long time. In France grows them. They've been you know. California, there's the one said, you're so used to seeing it buying. It says, but the noble great rice, and they're shrugging off that and turning their talents to making wines that embrace the region's unique cultural heritage. Uh, it says, for people who are intellectually stimulated by wine, talking about it, thinking about it, we think this heritage great movement is something they should get very excited about. This is from Peter Beecraft, head winemaker at Anthony Road Wine Company. So one of just two AVAs in the Finger Lake region in New York, Seneca Lake is known for its incredibly deep glacier-formed lakes, 600 feet in spots, and the world-class Rieslings that grow on its steep hillsides. While its Rieslings and other Alsatian-style wines are rightfully lauded, some of the most interesting and exciting wines coming out of the area comprise a family of grapes known collectively as heritage or heirloom varieties. I did not realize that there was only two AVAs in the Finger Lakes area. That really surprised me. I didn't been checking to it, but that surprised me. In Seneca Lake, heritage varieties generally fall into one of three categories. Native or indigenous to the area, like Niagara and Cataba, uh, or classic French-American hybrids, like Bacanor, Savelle Blanc, and Vidal Blanc, which were bred in France and have been grown in the Finger Lake region since well before Vitus vinifer varieties arrived, and Vitus vinifer is, again, the noble grapes, and third, Cornell-bred hybrids, which were developed in the Agritech program at nearby Cornell University specifically to thrive in the area. Tiaga and Marquis are two examples. So there you go. And you've heard of these. I'm sure you have. Then there is the hybrid grape called Vinoles. And this one I'm sure you've heard of too because you can buy it. In 1970, by the Finger Lakes Wine Grower, Association. It's a genetic parentage. Is, uh, its genetic parentage is a bit murky, but its historic ties to the region and promise as a wine grape are clear. Several of the region's best regarded dry and sweet wines feature vinol, and they do. If you start looking on the label of grapes from the Finger Lakes area and even New York, you go on down to Long. Island and to the uh, Hudson Valley, Vignoil is used a lot as it is in uh, Pennsylvania and Ohio and you know, a lot of these cold climates that they grow quite well there in, in the cold climate. Scott Osborne, who's the owner of Fox Run Vineyards, has weathered decades of lackluster industry response to wines made from the region's heritage rate, but feels the time has come for those wines to shine. Uh, native Native American grapes. So the people who come into our tasting rooms love these wines. No one under age 35 cares what the grape is or if it's Vitus vinifera or one of the six grapes the French started marketing as noble hundreds of years ago. People just want to drink good wine. And I think that's 
well put there. I mean, they're um, editorializing again, but a lot of people are getting away from the the noble grapes and getting away from the ones that people say you should drink this uh, and trying new things. To continue, with the digital generation's easy access to information and reduced reliance on published experts for advice, some see an opportunity to overcome old tropes about non-vinifera grapes. Climate change and the movement toward more sustainable agriculture are also factors that enhance the appeal of heritage grapes for the Seneca Lakes wine growers. Generally speaking, these grapes are easier to farm and require fewer inputs, says Gene Pierce, owner of Glenora Wine Cellars, who has been growing and making wine on Seneca Lake since the 1970s. Since heritage grapes are well adapted to the region's climate, that makes them less susceptible to rot, freezing, local pests, and other ills that can plague vineyards and often require chemical treatments. According to Beecraft, it's not just consumer, uh, consumers and farmers driving interest in heritage and wine grapes. A new generation of winemakers are starting to work with these varieties and getting knowledge and momentum toward producing very good wines that please even the most discerning palate. Aaron Mc, uh, McMurrow, brand manager at Lakewood Vineyards, agrees. There's excitement not just in New York, but all across the country for growing hybrids. There are a bunch of Cornell graduates now living in Oregon who are excited about these grapes. When asked about the biggest challenge to translating this enthusiasm to broader commercial viability, she says it's very clear. Education, awareness of the grapes, lack of recognition of the varieties, that's what's holding it back. Which is very true. I mean, you know, people will go over and buy wines that they're familiar with. You know, I always get Merlot. I'm going to buy Merlot. Well, here, try this. Well, I've never heard of that. I'm just going to stick with Merlot. And if people just pick up something else and try it, you would be surprised how much faster these things would actually catch on. Um, It says that, however, she is positive about the outlook for heritage wines from Seneca Lake and elsewhere. We are seeing New York sommeliers turning these into hip varieties and huge support for from consumers. And it's really a grassroots movement. I think it's more than that. I think it's it, I think it's picking up quite a bit. The uh, heritage grapes, a lot of areas are growing uh heritage grapes for um uh I, I just want to say Florida, Georgia uh grows a lot of their native grapes and uh doing quite well with it there. If you want to uh, learn more information and uh, find out something about Territory Lake, you can contact Brittany Gibson at Brittany at SenecaLakeWine.com. B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y at S-E-N-E-C-A-L-A L-A-K-E W I N E, SenecaLake.com. And uh, you can uh, find out more information and any questions you have or anything about it there. Um, interesting little article, though, on the fact that the, it's being picked up quite a bit the hybrids and indigenous grapes in the United States. We talked to, uh, and I can't remember, I apologize. Uh, Again, my computer's down, but we talked to someone who uh, was a big fan of the native grapes, the muscadine grapes, and he said that the, the, the it's an American grape. We need to embrace it. We need to start letting people know that this is an American grape, and you need to do it. My response then was, but a lot of people don't like the taste. He said, but you need to educate them. You need to let people know. You need to educate them, and that's pretty true there. I mean, you can't, uh, if people start tasting them and you start telling them about them, they start being able to have access to them, then they will more than likely catch on and uh, do more, do more for selling and stuff like that. But as it stands right now, uh, you know, the education is not there. You can go to wine stores, uh, bigger wine shops, uh, 
the uh, uh, oh, I, I'm I'm terrible tonight. My brain's not working right. Uh, uh, the big wine shops, uh, wine depots, and stuff like that, and they have a lot of local wines that were made with local grapes and try them pick them up give it a try and see what you think of it and you might like it you might enjoy it again you might not but uh you know and, and it also helps the local economy and also helps the local wine region stuff and wines in your state i know that here in florida you can find a lot of wineries that are local lake um uh, lakewood is that that it lakewood Lakewood Winery is a big one. They, they're distributed around to stores all over the state, uh, as is, uh, oh, what is that? Uh, Island, um, the Blueberry Wines in the Island. I Oh, we interviewed them. I can't think of that either. Boy, when my computer's down, I, I just I can't believe how much I rely on that for information. But um, uh, a lot of local wines are available in your stores and that's not just here in florida but that's all over the country i mean i've been to states and all that you walk into stores and you can see local wines on the shelf all the time and purchase them buy them it helps uh, them within your state it helps the winery and you know maybe the local grape varieties it may be stuff that has been hybrids and stuff like that and you may find yourself that you're enjoying that a lot more than you are the Merlots or the Cabs or the Chardonnays or the Reasings. And more than likely, they will cost less, too. So, But, uh, all right, I, you know, do you together think, something for you tonight here. I you, apologize for... Well, you did wonderful. Uh, uh, like, the, spur of the moment, based yeah, on uh, phone call. limited resources you have. Yeah, uh, I just... <laughs> yeah, that was great. I, I, I lost, you know... Uh, well, it just uh, one of the trade magazines had some of these articles in it, and yeah. a good chance to share them. But uh, yeah, uh, bottom line: buy buy your uh, buy your local wines. Mm-hmm. And we have a guest next week, by the way. Oh. Uh, I would tell you about him, but I cannot get <laughs> into the computer to find out anything about him. That is a problem. Uh, again, the com- com- computer is my brain, so I. I yeah. Don't have a brain one. That's all. Hmm. Were you thinking but, of? Uh, we uh, do have a guest next week. <clears throat> Were you thinking of Island Grove uh, in Kissimmee? Yes, Island Grove. Yeah, oh, okay. That's it. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Blueberry Island Grove. They're yeah. all over the state. They they have all sorts of fruit wines. They have mm-hmm. different ones and all that. So Island Grove. Yeah. If you live in Florida, uh, I highly recommend trying some of their wines. Or they, they distribute everywhere, mm-hmm. and they're. Blueberry wine, they have a sweet and they have a dry blueberry wine, and uh, but all of them are really quite yeah. tasty. It's very inexpensive, uh, probably under twelve bucks a bottle. Uh, I guess that's a yeah, seven hundred and fifty yeah. milligrams. So, um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely check it out. Yeah, oh, I'll I'll find here. so, so uh, uh, yeah. again, we have a guest next week. Uh, hopefully, we don't have a lightning storm go through and. <laughs> Kill us. Oh, the light flickered on and then it went back off. Oh, well. Uh, uh, yeah. It's, it's, we know how that works in Florida. We know how that works everywhere. People mm-hmm. have the lightning kick out stuff all the time everywhere. Yeah. So, but, well, yeah, I'll, uh, we let are everybody go for the night. Two minutes uh, past the hour, and, um, I'm positive that next week's show will go without a hitch this time as far as, you know, the different streams and stuff. I figured out what that problem was, and hopefully uh, our weather will improve. Oh, and good. Ron will be back. Yeah, it was – It was. It's, I had the other tab – other window open that I never could find for some reason. Uh, got that quieted real <laughs> quick. <laughs> I could not figure it out. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so uh, thank you all for joining us, and uh, we will – have at least that part back and hopefully uh, ron will um have his uh issue resolved uh hopefully l- very soon because it's it's never fun to go without you know that with unstable electricity is not a not a good thing um and it's yeah that's always true. around that time yeah. it's warm uh, yes yeah never during the winter time never during the cold months 
Yeah. Um, we'll That's be back. right. Always in the summer. Always in the summer. Thank you, Hurricanes. It's uh, <clears throat> August 11th will be our <laughs> next show at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time uh, right here on Blog Talk Radio uh, and now Twitter um, and Mixcloud Live as well as Facebook and, and Twitter or no, YouTube. So uh, we'll okay. see you all. We'll see you all next week. And, uh, have and great, Apple Podcast. We, Apple you know, Podcast. All you people doing that. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, Pod Addicts, yeah. I think, was the other one. Uh, I forgot there was a couple other sources. Uh, Pod Addicts was yeah, uh, so, uh, kind of threw us. We're like, what? <laughs> Who are they? Um, so Yeah, we were, we were surprised. Yeah. Very uh, very much so. Looking at the stats. What, in fact, we, they show us. Let's see. Let me, I'll tell you in a second. Here, I wrote it down. Let me find out where I wrote it down. Mm. Uh, oh, here, Podcast Addict. Mm-hmm. Oh, Addict, okay. Yeah, I thought it was. Uh, that was, yeah, Podcast Blues. Addict. Apple Podcast and Podcast Addict. But, yeah. um, the uh, Cigar People from the show last week, and again, thank them. They did a wonderful job. Mm-hmm. Cigar People from the show last week were wanting to know, you know, our numbers and that's when I found it in the Apple Podcast and Podcast Attic. We get quite a few listeners on those. So, yeah. thank you, you two. Uh, yeah, definitely. And uh, <clears throat> so, good numbers. And Mike, okay. you need to you need to close everything down because I can't. Oh yeah, uh, run the so, uh, the outro. Yeah. We'll see you all next uh, Thursday. Have a great weekend and a safe week, uh, and and a safe weekend. And uh, we'll be back next. Uh, August August 11th without any issues hopefully let's hope for the best without any issues yes. yeah. thank yeah. you all for listening appreciate thank it you. thank you we'll see you this concludes tonight's broadcast of All About Wine yes. with your host Ron for show information links to All About Wine on Twitter and Facebook or to be a guest on this show visit the show website at www allaboutwinebtr.com Archive shows are available for download on iTunes or on our show page at blogtalkradio.com forward slash allaboutwine. Thank you for listening. Drink responsibly and we'll see you next time on All About Wine.